Crypto fam to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Let's get it. Bitcoin back above 68,000. I'll be breaking down the latest what's going on in the markets, as well as Coinbase cleared in lawsuit over crypto transactions. Also, Genesis purchased 2.1 billion worth of Bitcoin following the recent GBTC sell off. We'll also be discussing BlackRock, Ad City, Goldman, UBS, Citadel, and Bitcoin ETFs authorized participants with the latest IBM. Bit holdings near in 260,000 Bitcoin in their possession. We'll also be discussing 90 trillion transfer of wealth is underway, along with a debt after death tidal wave, according to this latest report. I'm also going to be sharing with you a $150,000 Bitcoin tsunami incoming, according to this indicator, as well as the latest from Anthony Scaramucci, his Bitcoin price prediction for this cycle, as well as discussing Bitcoin to $8 million per BTC. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market, all this, plus so much more in today's show. Welcome, crypto fam. Shout out to everyone out in the live chat. Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Stress free, what it do? Crypto Voodoo, McFootinator, Jennifer, appreciate that. Smash the likes, always appreciated. Let's go. Welcome, Andrew. Welcome, Data. C list. Nobody mentioning Kathy Wood's water today. <laughs> Too late. Stack and Sats and almost heaven, West Virginia. Shout out, Hillbilly Will. Sailing. South Africa in the building. Welcome, fam. JV Mobroski, much love, respect. Yes, this is episode 1601. Chess day in Reading. Nice. To, for me, it's core day. After the stream, I'm going to be doing a core workout, which consists of push ups, planks, uh, crunches, ab wheel, all the fun stuff. Yep, 70,000 right around the corner. Send it, Grant. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, everyone joining the stream. Steve Stifler, shout out to the Stiffmeister. Tina Walker, welcome. Good to see your family. Let's go. Pump it up. Shout out Michael Hicks, BT Cowboy, Wayne's Aquarium, Rock On members. <laughs> Pump it up, family. Let's go. Now, we all know Bitcoin is the best asset. Shout out to Moonstone, Santa Barbara, California, representing DataBiter. Pump it up. Shout out Independent, Free Soul. Let's go. You agree? Agreed. And there, there is no second best asset. 100,000 around the corner. Let me know if you agree with Sailor. There is no second best. Mr. Gonzalez, welcome. DNA Noonan, welcome. Tomorrow is the new day, welcome. Big solar eclipse scheduled to take place in a couple of more days, fam. Two days out. There was a news anchor that accidentally slipped and referred to the upcoming <laughs> earthquake. <laughs> solar earthquake instead of eclipse, he said. So interesting. Uh, STX to the moon, too. Shout out. James, welcome to the stream. Giant58, welcome. April 10th is my birthday. That's what's up. We'll have to wish you a happy birthday on the show. Official Lele. Hi, Marty. <laughs> Welcome, Marty. Who would you consider sharing the sauna with? <laughs> you guys are relentless. All rise when Bitcoin rises. Amen. Has the eclipse happened yet? It's going to happen in two days. Hello, fam. JV, what's good? Looks like the trend of Bitcoin is taking. That's right. We're up $700 on the day. You already know. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, important to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also pump the likes. It helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm, and I greatly appreciate the support. Today is pod episode 1601. I'm your host, JV, and it's April 6th. 2024. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do every day. You can see Bitcoin back in the green, trading at roughly $68,500 at the time of this live, up 1% on the day. We also have Ether trading back above 3 1350 We have AVAX leading the pack as far as the top cryptos, up 5% on the day. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap, sits at $2.55 trillion with roughly $65 billion worth of volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance still on the climb at 52.7%, and Ether dominance all the way down to 15 
0.8%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we have CKB, W, Ordi, Ina, XCC, Pendle, and FLR. Which altcoins in particular are you guys most bullish on for this bull run? Let me know. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the day, you can see the majority of the alts back in the green and zoom it out on the monthly. Hmm, safe to say it's pretty divided, maybe 50-50, depending upon which altcoins you guys are bullish on. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fair Index, we're currently rated a 75, which is greed. Yesterday, 79, last week a 75, and last month an 82, extreme greed. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown clock, roughly 13 days to go until Bitcoin halving 2024 with the approximate date scheduled April 20th, now saying the 19th. It updates dependent upon the current block height. We're currently just surpass 838,000 block uh, today. And once we hit 840,000, in which we're less than 2,000 blocks away, we're going to have the Bitcoin halving, which we're all looking forward to. I'd love to know your thoughts and predictions where you feel the Bitcoin price will likely be at the time at around the halving. Holla. And welcome everyone joining the stream. Happy Sastack and Saturday. Pump the likes, pump the stream. Much appreciated. Shout out Devon. Welcome to the stream. Hope everyone's having a lovely weekend. That's right, CS. Cheers to that. Happy cat, a Kathy Wood coin. Oh boy. Did you guys see the Meow coin? There was some <laughs> trader that turned like something insane, like a few, a couple of thousand into like 13 million. Some insane meow coin. I bought a bunch of solar viewing cheapo glasses for my granddaughter's school class, and now I'm here. Our dangerous counterfeits out there, so I made a box of a welding lens. Wow. Uh, how high can Bitcoin go on before retrace? It could go as high as it likes. It can shoot up to 80, 90 before having a significant retrace, or it may have a significant retrace retesting 70 again. Uh, it's unpredictable, but one thing's for sure. Uh, Bitcoin will trend towards 100,000 as we get closer to the halving and of course post halving which is a very special window of opportunity uh the 12 to 18 months after the halving is when bitcoin typically goes parabolic hitting its cycle peak so we shall see stack and stats no ish there you go t dillard 75,000 by the halving says robert rolf 70,000 at the halving 5x the all-time high send it dan let's go uh yeah man Good stuff. I buy memes so you don't have to, <laughs> Marty. Bitcoin will do what Bitcoin will do. Amen to that, Jennifer. What up, JV? Shout out Coos Dog. Golly, 74.5 by the halving. The current high is roughly 73.8. So that would take us back into price discovery. I got cut out, had to reload and come back in. Bina's reloaded. Welcome. Dip hit, keep this tape like King Kong. Hey. More than five shots in your shack, then get it on. Yeah. Had the people on my back to get a song. Hey. The feds won't stop showing us love. That's right, Mick Footnator. You know you're doing it right when they start showing us love. JV coming through with the heat. Shout out Sammy G. Much appreciated. The fees on my long position are in the thousands of dollars. So 100,000 can't get here soon enough. Amen to that. Only a matter of time. Hello, afternoon. Happy afternoon, family. Maybe we all crush through this d double lunar eclipse on Monday 8th. Amen to that. Amen to that, Jerome Smith. Stay safe out there, family. Crazy world we're living in. But anyways, let's just dive into our next story of the day. The headline here reads, Coinbase cleared in a lawsuit over crypto transactions. That's right. Coinbase, the leading exchange here in the States, I believe they have over 100 million users. Uh, they had with the Court of Appeals for the second court, which ruled in favor of Coinbase, confirming the secondary sales of cryptos on its platform did not violate the Securities Exchange Act. Take that, Gary Gensler. Now, the court's decision affects a nationwide group of people who traded tokens on Coinbase from October 8, 2019 to March 11, 2022. At the heart of the dispute was whether Coinbase's traded cryptos met the criteria for securities. The plaintiffs lodged federal claims under Section 5 and 15 of the Securities Act of 1933 alongside Section 5. Uh, now, they also presented state law claims related to securities legislation in California, Florida, New Jersey, representing a nationwide class of individuals. The plaintiffs contended that Coinbase's actions amounted to offering and selling of unregistered securities, but furthermore, they accused it of violating various provisions of security laws. However, Coinbase contended that secondary crypto asset sales didn't meet securities transaction criteria, disputing the relevance of 
securities regulations. The Court of Appeals examined various aspects, ultimately overturning some of the lower court decisions while upholding the others. The court determined Coinbase's potential liability under Section 12 of the Securities Act for vending on registered securities, yet rejected the plaintiff's Securities Exchange Act claims, citing insufficient proof of transaction-specific contracts needed for rescission under Section 29. The court's decision hinged significantly on interpreting Coinbase's user agreements, which evolved over time, varying language across versions, complicated title and privity issues, uh, critical to the case. Clarity on the applicable user agreement version was emphasized with discrepancies hindering a definitive resolution. And I'll just give you the highlight here. Moreover, Coinbase CLO Paul Gruel expressed gratitude on X, stating that the second circuit reaffirm that there is no private liability for secondary trading of digital assets on exchanges like Coinbase under the federal securities law, emphasizing the significance of the contracts. So there is another win uh, for Coinbase, which is good for the exchanges. As we know, uh, the SEC has been cracking down for a while on all the exchanges, hitting them with outrageous fees and fines for violations of alleged securities violations. So there you go. Uh, let's go. Would you say Gary is a jack in the box? <laughs> Coinbase fits hinged. Uh, Ginsler is an alien with human skin. You see it under his eyes after a long day out of the pod. You, you got a good point there, Data. <laughs> to zero, it's a liability. Elon Musk is lizard people, says KJAM. Uh, <laughs> Tulip Mania, says Marcel. Are you referring to the dollar? Uh, Ginsler, Biden, Fanny, Willis, Jerome Powell are all clown emoji, says Hillbilly Will. Winning, says T. Dillard. Are you saying that Gensler is a skinwalker? <laughs> this makes Elizabeth very sad. We referring to Elizabeth Warren there. Uh, let's go. You know it. Shut out Adam. Shut out meatloaf farts. Nothing like a meatloaf fart. Just saying. Hey, bro, have a talk. We smoked them like a bomb. Oh, yeah, we heard Kramer report that. Recision. Sounds like unpleasant surgical procedure. Did we mean recession there? <laughs> recession. <laughs> I need to get a Bitcoin hat. Yes, you do. Be sure to visit the merch store, merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. There's a link in the description. Liability, go to zero and a big crash, says Marcel. Um, there's also a liability you get struck by lightning tomorrow. I mean, anything can happen, but what's the probability of that? And yes, there's liability in everything. Of course, crossing the street has a liability. Hopping in a whip and driving to your destination is a major liability, right? <laughs> we don't know how lucky we are, and we don't know how early we are. We're going to the moon, says uh, Tink Train. I've been on a meatloaf diet since the 80s, <laughs> says Marty. I bet. Pump it up. You already know. But anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest here actually with Genesis. This uh, is at the $2.1 billion buy. Yeah, check this out. This is big news. Uh, bankrupt crypto lending firm Genesis reportedly offloaded 36 million shares of GBTC to acquire additional Bitcoin as part of its preparations to settle its debts with its creditors. According to a recent Bloomberg report, Genesis liquidated approximately 36 million GBTC shares April 2nd, valued at approximately $58.50 per share. The share price climbed by approximately 50% since Genesis initially sought permission from the U.S. Bankruptcy Court to sell the $36 million in GBTC shares February 2nd when the shares were at $38.50. The total sale amount came to $2.1 billion, which allowed the purchase of 32,000 Bitcoin April 2nd. Wow, that was four days ago at $65,600. Genesis will use the Bitcoin to continue its efforts to repay its creditors at the time of public the 32,000 Bitcoin is worth $2.18 billion. And recently, Coinbase assured the community that the sell-off was not expected to have a wider impact on the crypto market, quitting Coinbase. Our view is that much of these funds will likely remain within the crypto ecosystem, contributing to a neutral overall effect 
in the market. It explained that the rules of the bankruptcy plan to allow Genesis to either convert shares of the GBTC into the underlying Bitcoin asset on behalf of the creditors or sell the shares outright and distribute the cash. This comes after the DCG, Digital Currency Group, argued that its subsidiary company Genesis has proposed paying its customers more than they're entitled to. February 6th, uh, it was reported DCG claims Genesis's current plan would see hundreds of millions of dollars, more than the full amount of their petition date claims, go to the lenders. And Genesis filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy that was back in January of 2023. So there you have it. Family, let me know your thoughts on that. It's good to see GBTC stacking some biddies after offloading so many over the past couple of months since converting their trust into an ETF. Cool way to go. He got struck by lightning versus got run over by IKEA. Who do you refer to there, Adam? Chris June, welcome. CNA, let's go. No JV. You just read the word rescission right on. <laughs> I looked up rescission and it means canceling or revoking a law or agreement. That's right. Makes sense. Like rescinded. Exactly. But it's also windy, so it could be extra wash and dry, says Adam. This is icing on the cake, washed and then naturally softened with the rainwater. Hmm. I don't even know what you guys are referring to. Are you levered up? Who is levered up here? Anyone here trading with leverage? Curious to note. We now got Bitcoin up 800 on the day. Don't let fear keep you from hodling Bitcoin. Leave the house at the risk. No worries. Lawyers will soar up any extra money. Soak up. The <laughs> Crazy yo. Anyways, anyone joining the stream, pump the likes, pump the stream. Greatly appreciate y'all. Happy Sassack and Saturday. Let's dive into the latest of what's going on with BlackRock. And uh, yeah, check it out. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, filed an update to its iShares Bitcoin Trust prospectus with the US SEC on Thursday. According to the filing, ABN Amro, Clearing USA, Citadel Securities, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Jane Street, JP Morgan, Mac Aquari, and UBS Securities, and Virtu Americas are now authorized participants for the iShares Bitcoin Trust. IBIT baskets can only be created or redeemed by authorized participants in a block of 40,000 shares, which is called a basket. Now, initially, only Jane Street Capital, JP Morgan Securities, Mac Quarry Capital, and Virtue Americas were named authorized participants, and IBIT's prospectus filed January 9th, a day before the US SEC approved 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. BlackRock added ABM AMRO Clearing USA, Citigroup, Goldman, and UBS Securities in its prospectus amendment filed March uh, fourth. Now, Citadel Securities joined the list in the latest amendment as the ninth authorized participant for IBIT. And since IBIT launched January 11th, BlackRock has been rapidly buying Bitcoin for its spot Bitcoin ETF. The iShares Bitcoin Trust Bitcoin holdings have risen to 260,000 BTC as of Thursday. That's mind boggling. Less than three months, they have acquired 260,000 of the Bitcoin supply. That's over 1% of the circulating supply. Now, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said last week he is very bullish on the long term viability of Bitcoin. The executive noted the iShares Bitcoin Trust is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs, and nothing has gained assets as fast as IBIT in the history of ETFs. Now, Robert Machitnik, BlackRock's head of digital assets recently emphasized that for the firm's clients, Bitcoin is overwhelmingly the number one priority. He further revealed, and then a little bit, Ethereum and very little everything else. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts on BlackRock's bullishness with acquiring 260,000 Bitcoins since the launch of their ETF on January 11th. Bitcoin will make 350000 at the peak of this cycle, predicts Dan. Respect. Uh, thank you for sharing. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings the total obliteration. I will face my fear, says Data. I love the poem. I have it on my morning coffee mug. My friend made it for me. Right on, Jennifer. Well, I wish it would hurry up and get going. Letta, love, gotta love. Yes, absolutely okay, good. Gotta love bit the biddies. Game theory in action. Everybody wants a piece of the TC pie. What's the TC pie stand for? Shout out Barack Monfils Evangelista. Greatly appreciate you giving your 20th super on stream. Much respect to the OG. Happy Saturday. Sat stack and Saturday. Good shepherd. Welcome to the stream. Everyone just joining us. Make sure to pump that thumbs up. It helps out with the algo. 
greatly appreciated. And shout out to the Rumble fam as well. Asymmetric investments don't need leverage, especially high volume ones. Get greedy, get wrecked, warns CS. <laughs> I keep 500 on many my exchanges to scalp the high leverage, says Bina. Never a penny more. Sometimes a good profit and sometimes with loss. Never with an amount Hmm. Right on. That's right. There's no second best. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. You already know. Much love and respect. Shout out GC LLC and James Bradley. Welcome to the stream. Liability, go to zero. If crash comes, Bitcoin's our liability. And vice versa, what if the dollar or your local currency crashes? And when you say the tulip bulb fiat monopoly money is a greater liability, which one has been increasing purchasing power for the past 15 years? And which one has been decreasing your purchasing power, Marcel, in the past 15 years? I'll wait for it. DCA all the way. Take the stress out. Definitely a solid strategy there. Okay. That's what Sailor, Bukele, and all the greats are doing. Where are your likes? I mean, that's a fantastic question. Stress-free. We should have more likes. Uh, Bitcoin solves the crash, says Dan Cardin. Bitcoin has no counterparty risk. I don't like trading with leverage during high volatility. I prefer to huddle at this time, says Jennifer. Sage advice. You have Tom Crown vibes, I sub. <laughs> well, thank you, Ciamano. I think. It's all going to zero against Bitcoin, against the Apex Predator. Devon says, JV is no second best. Greatly appreciate your support. Devon, thank you for the super. DCA, CNA, good afternoon, JV and fam. Shout out, Carrie Watts. Good to see you, Carrie. McFootinator, what it do? Let's get it. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Be water, my friends. You put the Bitcoin into the Trezor, it becomes the Trezor. You put the Bitcoin onto the exchange, it becomes the exchange. You self custody your Bitcoin. Be Bitcoin, my friend. Should I sell? Well, tell me why you would want to. What's your reasoning for even asking? Is my question to you. I don't mess with leverage too dicey, just DCA and buy the dips. With the BlackRock volume decrease, one grayscale stop selling. How much of their volume are grayscale transfers? All excellent questions. Keep the comments flowing. We're going to be having a Q&A session towards the end of the show, of course. I still got to get through a lot of news. So let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss the 90 trillion incoming into the market. If you're just joining us, pump the likes. Pump the stream. Here's the latest crypto news for the day. An estimated 90 trillion transfer of wealth is now underway as baby boomers begin to give assets to their children. How many baby boomers here in the live chat with us? Let us know. And a new survey shows a massive transfer of debt is happening at the same time. A whopping 46% of Americans expect to pass on some form of debt when they pass away. According to a new survey by Policy Genius, the survey shows 58% of the people who earn at least 150,000 a year expect their loved ones to inherit their debts when they die. Now, for those who earn less than 150,000 per year, that number drops to 47%. And according to numbers compiled by Yahoo, the average American household owes about 10,000 in credit card debt, 241,000 in mortgage debt, 59,000 in student loan debt, and 22,000 in car loans. Now, Policy Genius says that among the pool of Americans who expect to leave debt behind, 21% do not have life insurance and would help pay it off. That would help pay it off, that is. So as you can see here, zooming out, a total of 43% of the baby boomers said their loved ones would need to pay off debts if they passed away now, compared to 52% of millennials. And 60% of Americans who are currently living with their kids say their loved ones who need to pay their debts if they die today, compared to just 38% of those who don't live with their children. Now, Poly, or Policy Genius commissioned YouGov to conduct the survey, polling 4,000 Americans 18 years or older with a margin of error of 2%. 
So there you have it. Uh, fam, what are your thoughts on that as this 90 trillion wealth transfer continues uh, from the baby boomers to millennials and younger generations entering the Bitcoin markets? Let me know. And our next story, we're going to be discussing a 150,000 target, followed by the latest from Skybridge Capital's Anthony Scaramucci. We're going to be discussing 170,000 uh, incoming, as well as a potential $8 million price projection. I think I even got a 400,000 prediction, uh, all to share with you here coming up. But uh, let's get back to some of the chat. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Shout out to everyone. This is live and interactive, so be sure to say hello, deuces, something, say what up. Hello. Thumb matters. <laughs> Yellow thumbs matter. Uh, don't play the leverage with the money that you cry over. It's loss. That's right. There's an old saying that, uh, what is that? Uh, when gambling, scared money don't make money. And uh, overall, investing is a form of gambling. I like to be more specific. It's more educated a little more educated than just random gambling, right? Because we understand Bitcoin, but nonetheless, crypto in general, I would consider a gamble because prices go up and down on a daily basis. So, uh, Boomer here, I'm taking my Bitcoin with me, might keep me out of hell. It's like a get out of hell, get out of jail free card. Hudson, Florida in the building. Shout out James Nelson, go Cobras. <laughs> Yeah, I think the bars to one of my raps I performed at uh, Hudson High School talent show was, yo, it's the Hudson High Cobra Samurai slap you sober. <laughs> talent show 2000, the way that I flow, keep the gym crowded. <laughs> and I was like grabbing my nuts on my DMX ish. And I shut down the talent show. They actually stopped my music. I guess I was grabbing my nuts too much. I don't know but it was pretty historic. The estate has to pay the debt, whatever. Oh yeah, and I kept rapping after they cut my mic and I just went very loud and I wouldn't get off the stage. It was pretty hilarious. Skinny Spar <laughs> will take a sure thing and turn it into a gamble. Come on, man. The estate, <laughs> when I lived in Germany, parents could be liable for the children's debt until they were in the 30s, whoa. And do you know in China, when I lived there, um, if you owned a property, let's say you owned your condo or whatever, the government takes it after you die, meaning you can't leave it for your kids. It just goes to the government for the greater good. Crazy, right? Talk about inheritance tax. Sup, JB? What up, Steven? When I lived in Germany, parents could be, yeah, man. Uh, Plan B stock to flow chart has an average price. This bull run, 500000 so we need to peak above that this cycle says Jason. We'll send it already, shall we? But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss this $150,000 Bitcoin target, shall we? Closely followed crypto analyst Jamie Kautz says one indicator with a history of calling Bitcoin Q2 and Q3 rallies is potentially about to flash green for the king. Couch tells his followers on X that the dollar index, DXY, which measures the strength of the US dollar against a weighted basket of other major foreign currencies, is a critical indicator to watch for Bitcoin. DXY is often inversely correlated with risk assets, rising when they sell off and falling when they rally. And according to Couts, every time June to September, Bitcoin rally has been sparked by a weakening dollar index. Quoting them here, if there was one indicator to watch to see if this thesis is playing out accordingly or not, I would think it would be the dollar. Every Bitcoin summer rally has been precipitated by a stronger dollar, which peaks and rolls over, which as it cascades lower, sends Bitcoin skyrocketing. And with the DXY in the midst of a long consolidation range, Couch says that they break below 101 mark would be what kicks off a massive rally for Bitcoin. Quitting them again. Currently, the DXY is trapped in a narrow consolidation range. A break above 107, 108 would put serious pressure on all risk assets. A break below 101 should see a move to the low 90s, which, if that were to occur, would likely send Bitcoin to 150000 per coin based on the previous DXY moves. So there you have it. Crypto fam, let me know if you agree or disagree with the 150000 price target here. Holla. Uh, you don't own it in China at all. It's technically like a 79-year lease. Pretty much, see this, pretty much. I agree. He said he wants to tax death upwards of 80%. Good Lord. Are you referring to their uh, Sleepy Joe? What's that Brandon wants to do? Yes, that is Sleepy Joe. 
Uh, JV was doing the MJ ball grab on the stage. Pretty much. I call it the DMX. But yeah, pretty much the MJ ball grab. Um, I agree. So yeah, DXY is down. Titles gift from the old. Right on. I am looking into a family trust that's supposed to protect assets more. We shall see, says Steve. Death of the dollar. I remember that documentary Kaiser put out. Uh, shout out Digital Dankness. Good to see you, broski. And cheers to that. Here's one thing that I know for sure with Bitcoin. Don't call it a comeback, for real. Don't call it a comeback. Bitcoin's been here for years. Peer to peer, bit of suckers to fear. For the heavyweight championship of the world. Let's go. Looking forward to the having. Right on, Paul. Having time is coming to a theater near you. You already know. See Amano. Guys, help this guy get to 100,000 subs. Appreciate that. All you guys got to do is make sure to subscribe, pump the likes, get more eyeballs on the stream. Pr much appreciated. Historic times. I mean, we have a having in less than two weeks. China also have debtors, prisons, also a major real estate crisis coming on. They'll have nowhere to put in the people. Maybe they'll just send them to the States, considering we have no borders. If you take every price prediction and average them out, you get the magic number. Exactly okay, good. And it's only $19.47 billion per coin. There are services that allow you to hold a multi-sig vault where your loved ones have the key and get a second key on your death. That seems to be the safest way so far. Shares data. Right on. People that invest in fiat, what do we call them? I mean... That's a great question, by the way. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Now, people that say fiat and use it as a store of value, what do we call them, folks? People, 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 people that use, that use, that use fiat, 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 fiat currency. currency. What do we call them? Let me know in the chat. Sealess, bang on JV, many Chinese coming, exactly. As a store of store of store of store of value, we call them we core. That's right. What do we call them, folks? We call them we core. People, people, people that use. <laughs> yes. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Let's go. You guys already know. That's right, K Jam. Appreciate the links in the description. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Shout out Molly. Welcome to the stream. Pretty much Leonard, that's what they call him. Exactly. Moxie. Plebs. That's it. <laughs> fiat, fiat. Shout out Raul Fibonacci. Appreciate you subbing. All subscribers will get an on screen shout out, so make sure to subscribe. Currency. We call them the core. We call them the core. Who doesn't love Chinese food? Mm mm mm. Now subscribe. We call them the core. We call them the core. Too many frogs and scares. Uh, this clown's trying to take us down. What a guy. Wow, what a guy. Wow, what a guy. <laughs> what is it about Bitcoin that causes you to conclude it is not a security? Well, there's it. Uh, one is there's no group of individuals in the middle. Right. It's there's decentralized. No group of in <laughs> Gary, shout out. S. Moxie. Appreciate you, Seven. Let me just say, guess who's back, 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 back again. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. right. There's a name. Yeah. For My point is, it is not reasonable to fail to provide clarity, to provide. Yeah, no Claire Gare. We need some clarity around here. Hey, shout out to you, too. Appreciate you, Raul. Appreciate you becoming a member of the channel. Everyone who has a green name, that means you're a member. And of course, the blue names are the mods. Shout out to the moderators as well. Greatly appreciate the support. Mix some more J-Pal. I do need some J-Pal clips. I don't think I have any J-Pal in here. Gary Gensler is hogging the soundboards. What's up with that, Gary? Gary's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back. Guess who's back. Guess who's back. <laughs> The definition of exactly where on this continuum 
you have a sufficient common enterprise that it qualifies as a security, and where you don't. You say, we call them the core. core, core. That Bitcoin doesn't. Some of your colleagues have said Ethereum doesn't. But a reasonable developer who wants to comply with this doesn't know where that line is drawn. You want help? Well, this is what I'll give you. A little middle finger mixed with the last two. They must have forgot who I am, what I'm up to. Yeah. So a common enterprise. I think about a group of individuals in the middle. That developer is in the middle and the investing public's betting on them, counting on them, even if... Up the phone when you call something I'll not do. No. I'm shocked that you're just not cooperating. It's uh, obvious you're wrong. Stop the debating. Very the token might be on a thousand computers. That's not what the Supreme Court's looking at. It's not about the... Clear. Back to stop operating. Everybody go back to the job you're hating. Miss Luna. Being on a thousand computers. It's just like a group of developers but, in the middle. But FTX, LCS2. But my only job is protecting you. Wow, so cool. the SEC's protecting me. These Hilarious track. <laughs> Shout out, Vina. Appreciate you gifting a membership of the channel. Congratulations, Molly. You've just been hooked up on behalf of Vina. Greatly appreciated. Love and light. Let's get it. Enjoying the jammy jams. I'm a 74 year old baby boomer. Hoddle Michael, 74. That's what's up, broski. Uh, welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are enjoying it. 60 G's, baby! You just shook up the world. How's that feel? Bitcoin's like, hey, I'm not surprised, mother. <laughs> when Bitcoin recaptures 70,000. It's red panty night when you sign to fight me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the 10 says commandments. Well, well, well. You know what time it is. Woo. We back, baby. Bitcoin, shit coins, or NFTs. When you encrypt monetary energy on the Bitcoin network, it's no greater feeling than hitting that sweet, sweet. It's like achieving escape velocity. Old time, old time, old time, old This bitch, watch it pump to the sky. We just buying your bitch. Let's go. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Can anyone define the guidelines Gary set forth? <laughs> Did he? Does he even give guidelines? Is the question. The only thing they always reference, the Howey test. The Howey, according to the Howey test from 19 or from 1472. Uh, drinking coffee and water today, right on. They asked me about the peripheral vision. Hell, the only vision I have is <laughs> Bitcoin has no age limit. Facts strike the like. Please, legends. I greatly appreciate that fairground. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the stream. Kicking it with y'all the gravity well throw a baseball on a baseball field it goes yeah. old time high, old time high, old time high in this yeah, bitch yeah, watch yeah. it pump pump baby uh, we just buy and get rich a couple of hundred feet get out of the gravity well throw the baseball it'll go around the earth forever so how yeah. back we back in the black we back in the green got the team all around me we rowdy and causing scene. how much more distance do you get out of the baseball if you pay the price of getting out of the gravity well it's where you been grab a cup baby come and take a sip it's not like 10 times better. It's not a hundred times better. It's not a million times better. Oh my bad, yo, what's up? Man, you did it by the dip. It goes to infinity and it never stops. That's rough, oh that's tough, oh that's really gotta suck. Yeah. Only problem that we got is that we didn't buy enough. And that's the breakthrough that people don't get. It's like, what could I do if I had vacuum and I was rid of friction? And I joke, man, I kid, know exactly what we did. Yeah. Now we pull up in the whip, cause we just hit. Bitcoin is the most efficient system for channeling energy through time. Old time, I, old time, I, old time I in this bitch. Watch it pump to the sky. We just buy and get yeah. rich. Time and space in the history of mankind. We've never figured out how to channel energy with no impedance and channel energy with no loss. Yeah. Old time, I, old time, I, old time I in this bitch. Watch it pump, pump, baby. We just buy and get rich. You already know. Let me know if you're enjoying the mix. Santa Barbara in the building. There can only be one. You already know data. Let's go. But anyways, fam, 
Now let's dive into our featured story of the day, discuss the latest Bitcoin price prediction from Skybridge Capital's Anthony Scaramucci, as well as an 8 million Bitcoin price prediction. Let's actually, you can see in the headline, Bitcoin to 8 million, Scaramucci shares epic Bitcoin price prediction. But I actually want to start with a tweet that I quoted uh, from a interview of Scaramucci, and I posted it several months back on X. Got a lot of, a lot of love. I think we hit forty-two thousand views, one hundred sixty retweets, six hundred forty-four likes. I'm actually going to retweet it right now. If you're following me on X, uh, please check out my account, retweet anything that resonates with you that you'd like to share, get more eyeballs too. I'm pretty active on X, as you can see. But anyways, Scaramucci, four hundred thousand dollar price prediction and one billion users. So we're going to discuss this real quick. Uh, what does Bitcoin look like at a billion users? And this is what Scaramucci wrote. I transcribed it word for word. I am going to be very simplistic. A billion users is roughly 8x more than we are right now. Bitcoin actually think we're undervalued and technically oversold here. So I wouldn't have thought that Bitcoin would be where we are in terms of users at 50,000. So intrinsic fair value to me would be about $400,000 per coin fair play, right? I'd add a billion users because, again, you have a fixed supply and you've got less than 21 million coins out there. And you and I both know that the mining finishes in the year 2140, when we'll have the final Bitcoin mined. But you have also lost coins in process of adoption. We probably got two to three million coins that have been misplaced and they can be in a landfill. They can be in an old BlackBerry or somebody's laptop back from 2010. And as a result of which you probably have about 18 million coins in the universe. There are 48 million millionaires on planet Earth, according to JP Morgan. Well, there's only 18 million Bitcoins in existence. You don't even have enough Bitcoins for every millionaire on planet Earth to own just one coin. So you can't tell me that the scarcity properties of this are not going to drive the prices higher. Now, he makes a great point. There is such a finite, limited supply. We know they can't print more. It's incorruptible. And because no one can change that code, it makes it the only true asset with true scarcity. Whereas if you compared it to something like gold, gold has relative scarcity, but you can always find more of the precious metal. All you got to do is dig the earth. And now for the latest of Scaramucci, who was recently just interviewed. Let's discuss this. Legendary investor Scaramucci shared his view on the Bitcoin price ahead of the halving event, scheduled to take place in roughly two weeks. During his recent interview on CNBC, Scaramucci noted that the halving is not yet priced in, as the Bitcoin price has a lot more to go. Let me know if you agree with that. I definitely agree that the halving is not yet priced in. As far as the price target, he expects Bitcoin valuation to rise as much as 10 times from the current level. So where's Bitcoin right at? Right now, uh, 68,000 plus, so 10X here would be almost a $700,000 Bitcoin if we were to 10X as he just shared, quoting him here. I am simply saying it should trade at half the valuation of gold, which is a six to eight to 10 times move from here. However, this movement will not happen in the short term, he added. And here's a little clip that he actually posted on his own X. A thanks uh, CNBC for having me to discuss Bitcoin's future. I made a strong run in my thoughts on the sad but necessary SBF sentencing. And if you recall, he actually made a deal with Sam and FTX. And in exchange for a part of his company, he got worthless FTT token. So he was right caught in the middle. But anyways, watch the interview that he did. Uh, check the show notes below the video in the description. Now let's discuss his uh, cycle target. In April 2024, the Bitcoin market, as we know, experienced significant growth with the introduction of the Bitcoin ETFs on January 11th and driving over 10 billion of new flows into Bitcoin. This surpasses the 10 billion milestone reached by the gold ETF in just 25 percent of the time. And there is a belief that the Bitcoin having event where minor rewards get cut in half has already been factored into the pricing. But Scaramucci disagrees, arguing that there is still more room for significant growth uh, in the Bitcoin value. Scaramucci sees Bitcoin as a digital store value akin to gold with potential for a six to 10 times increase in value from the current levels, as we just outlined. So despite Bitcoin's potential, Scaramucci acknowledges its volatility and cyclical nature, predicting a potential price target of $170,000 for this cycle, driven by waves of demand and adoption. Additionally, Scaramucci reveals an interest in other cryptos like Solana and Avalanche, although Bitcoin remains the primary focus due to its dominance 
in the market. Now, Scaramucci is also a vocal advocate for Bitcoin and has been actively promoting its transformative potential. He remains optimistic about the Bitcoin ETFs, drawing comparisons between Bitcoin and gold as stores of value, and speculating on the eventual recognition of Bitcoin's value by traditional investors like Warren Buffett. I mean, he shared here, buy Bitcoin, get ready. They won't stop. A million simulations, one verdict for the U.S. economy, debt, danger ahead, which ultimately means they're guaranteed to continue to print, which means Bitcoin is mathematically guaranteed to increase its purchasing power as the dollar is destined to do the polar opposite and lose purchasing power. So yeah, the Bitcoin advocate reacted uh, to the latest projections from the Congressional Budget Office, indicating the U.S. federal debt will rise 116% by 2034. I think they're already close to $35 trillion in debt. This trajectory surpasses the debt level observed during World War II, but the actual outlook may be even more concerning. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, Bitcoin ultimately reaching a billion users and hitting and smashing 400,000 per coin, rising as high as 800,000 a coin, or even as high as $8 million uh, per coin. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, yeah, and I'll be checking these here in a second. I want to share my sentiment. I personally feel that this particular cycle for a peak, my bear scenario, is way more bullish than uh, Scaramucci's of 170,000. I think bear case, we're destined to hit 222, which is 222,000. My bull scenario is as high as 750. So the average would be 500,000. I do feel we have some type of super cycle because this cycle is very different from some of the previous ones. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is we have the institutional FOMO, which did not exist previously. You now have companies like BlackRock who have over 260,000 Bitcoin, and this is driving uh, they're sucking up a lot of the the you know the daily issuance of Bitcoin, and that daily issuance is about to get slashed in half via the halving in roughly two weeks. And when that happens, and open up the chat here, uh, we're going to be doing Q and A here in a second. So yeah, so when that happens, I mean numbers go up when you have a very limited supply. No more can be minted, unlike the Ethereum Foundation. And so yeah, simple supply demand. Uh, you're going to have a a supply shock. We already have a demand shock, which we're already witnessing this year from the inflows of the ETFs, but we're going to have a supply shock. Uh, that could occur anywhere from the next six to 18 months, probably roughly a year from now. There won't be any Bitcoin available for sale. And then we also have nation state adoption, sovereign wealth fund adoption. Uh, we have ETFs uh, going to be launched in other countries. Then we have you know speculation of big adoption coming from the Middle East uh, in oil rich companies like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or Qatar, they're sitting on a pretty substantial sovereign wealth fund. Uh, then we have talk of the UAE, uh, Abu Dhabi, which is Dubai. Um, a lot of the oil money uh, could flow into Bitcoin. We have a total addressable market, they say north of $900 trillion. Bitcoin just took 5% of that market share. We can see some of these big uh, predictions come into fruition, like the 8 million, 10 million. Uh, if we hit I mean, one third of the total addressable market eventually flew into Bitcoin. It's safe to say those hundred million dollar price targets become a topic of conversation. Anything is possible. The question is, how much energy will flow into Bitcoin, right? Uh, how much capital will park itself in Bitcoin? How many billionaires like the Donald Trumps that are fighting with the courts and the corruption in our world, uh, they're trying to confiscate all of his assets, all of his property, and they're just making up a bunch of shenanigans at the end of the day. So if you were someone like Trump, and let's hypothetically say you were worth $8 billion, where would you park that capital? Would it be in real estate, which they can just confiscate from you? Would it be in precious metals, which they can confiscate from you? Would it be in the bank that they can confiscate from you? Would you put it in stocks that they can confiscate from you? Or would you self-custody it? into some Bitcoin. Uh, the only unconfiscatable asset that is the greatest store of value and greatest savings that ever exist in mankind. There is literally no second best. If you missed yesterday's episode, we shared uh, Bitcoin going to close to $2 million per coin as per an analyst, just based on the fact of the crap with Ethereum in which 
Ethereum is experiencing and what they're doing right now. Um, it was pretty insightful. We got a lot of views. So if you missed yesterday's podcast, be sure to check it out. And where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Holla. Now let's do our live Q&A. Uh, I'll read as many of these comments out loud as I can. 500,000 mid-range, 700,000 is above bullish, 200,000 fairly conservative. Math of the big number says it's unlikely to be less than that. Right on data. Institutions or mining will kick in. That's right. We didn't even mention that. Park it up, Bitcoin. Arse up to the left. There you go. F the government. Buck the Fed. As countries get more and more fed up with the dollar and the reserve currency, Bitcoin will be the replacement. That's right. It's also a hedge against tulip mania, fiat currency. I'm happy I find this channel. Thank you, Ciamano. Respect. Buck the Fed. F the government. 100. The government. Supply shock. Demand shock. If Bitcoin hit 200,000 Bitcoin, I'll be in shock. Damn right. 5 million in 2030, stock to float at, dang. No, I missed the live. How dare you, CNC? How can you miss it live? <laughs> so yeah, 4 p.m. Eastern all week. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back at 4 p.m. Eastern as well. We're four, right now it's 4.51 here in Puerto Rico. As an investor, you hope for either supply shock or demand shock. Bitcoin gives you both. This never happens. Cheers to that, Grant. The government getting too big, says Devon. Man, they've been too big. Slang down. Nice. I dig it, K-Jam. Buck the Fed. Cheers, Molly. Bitcoin all the way going up. Go for it, Molly. Fellow Yorkshire sat stacker. Shout out, Richard. Rumble after show, JV. Yes, K-Jam. The after party will be on Rumble. Shout out to the Rumble fam. For those that don't know, we're streaming, dual streaming as we do every day. We're on the tube. We're on Rumble. When the tube stream ends, we continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble. So I always encourage everyone to follow me on Rumble. Let's go. Vibes. Freak the Fed. Vodka in the cup. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <sighs> 100,000 by the having. Late today. Clock's gone forward an hour. Oh, did they? I didn't know that. So the UK, they had a time change. Good to note, Paul. Much appreciate letting me know. Shout out to the UK fam. Let's freaking go. Rocket ship to the moon all afternoon. Pump it up, don't you know? Pump it up. You've got to pump it up, don't you know? Yes, the government trying to keep the price down because they're trying to keep it from overtaking and crashing the dollar. Facts. They understand the threat. Bitcoin poses to them very clearly. JV is streaming on my Rumble TV app. That's what's up, KJM. Respect. What's a Rumble subscription cost? I think it's the same as the Tube. You only need the subscription if you don't want ads, which I would encourage you to get on YouTube and Rumble if you use it, because I think it may be $10 a month and you never have to watch an ad. If you don't mind ads, of course, uh, YouTube is free as you're here right now, and Rumble is free, so it depends upon what you choose to use as an experience, I would encourage you to get the premier experience and watch ad free because I don't pitch anything during the show. So it's ad free on my end. But if you don't want the YouTube or Rumble to pitch you whatever the heck they're pitching you, then clearly just get the membership. You never got to watch an ad. I'd say your time is worth it if you're on YouTube or Rumble a lot. I have a premium membership of both communities because I watch videos a lot. Let's go. What up, JV? Shout out, Erico. Shout out, Rob C. What it do? I define my next peak in between 500, 680, 2025, 2026, 2027, and 2028. I do not care. That's right. Oh, pump it up. You got to pump it up. I have Pump It Up as my ringtone. Nice. I know that's your song, Jennifer. YouTube Premium should allow free speech. <laughs> Did you buy the dip? Can you solve the riddle? Right on. Me thinks you pitch Bitcoin nonstop. Me thinks. When I drop, this guy is cool. Click and like the sub. I appreciate you, Ciamano. Don't you ever be a bear. Actually, government, whole assets, in my opinion, and saw an opportunity to make money to buy the debt. 
No, it's the only solution at the deflation. Watch Bitcoin hit 300,000. Send it, sneaky kill. JV pitches Bitcoin like it's going to run out. <laughs> Bitcoin's going to knock you out. Satoshi's going to knock you out. Oh my God, he got Rare Kitty. What's Rare Kitty? Bitcoin's going to knock you out. Satoshi's going to knock you out. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, fam, let's continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble. The YouTube stream is about to end. We're going to continue with the uncensored version exclusive on Rumble. Rumble is free. Just click the link in the description. I always have my Rumble link. It's rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net or simply open the app and just type in Crypto News Alerts. And I look forward to seeing you guys over on Rumble for the after party deuces. I'll be back at 10 p.m. here on the tube uh, with the live premiere. Deuces, see you on Rumble. All right, YouTube stream.